Hello, planet Earth. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're at IDK, my BFF Jill 730. I'm Presnell Young, wishing you warm salutations and congratulations, as always, you've made your way to the Buffington Post. Today, I'm actually going to be talking to one of you guys and all of you guys. And let me just say that I can't do this by myself. I mean, I know I make all my videos by myself pretty much, but I, I love hearing from you guys. I love getting your feedback. Buffy fans, we gotta stick together. It's crazy that, I don't know, 20 years later, this fandom is still going strong. So I just want to say thank you to all of you who comment. I read all of your comments, and I'm just really thankful that everybody is using my channel to talk to each other about Buffy. And so a few months ago, I did a top five Buffy episodes uh, in answer to Disney Stuff's question, aka Jonathan, and um, one of my uh, longtime subscribers and frequent commenters gave me his top five, and I thought that I would comment on his choices. So, with no further ado, here we go. It's Andre's top five episodes. I am the stone that the builder refused. I am the visual, the inspiration that made ladies sing the blues. I'm the spark that makes your idea bright. The same spark that lights the dark so that you can know your left from your right. I am the ballad in your box, the bullet in the gun, the inner glow that let you know to call your brother son. The story that just begun, the promise of what's to come. And I'm going to remain a soldier till the war is won. <laughs> For number five, Andre has blood ties. And he says, I love most of season five. Glory was my favorite villain. I like comedy. I also love watching Buffy be the protective older sister. So this episode gives me all of these elements and Joyce was still alive. So um, yeah, blood ties is a really interesting episode. It's one of our first episodes that gives us a real bond between Dawn and Spike and it also shows a side to Joyce that we really hadn't seen. She really stood up for Dawn in a way that was kind of unexpected given what she knew about Dawn at the time. And yeah, having Buffy say, no, I don't care about these memories. It's about the fact that you are my sister now. That is what's reality now. I'm going to accept that and you have to accept that too. And so I really do like that, and this is also where Willow starts to become a little bit more powerful. Um, we see her teleport Glory right the hell out of the hospital. And also, this is where we find out that Ben is Glory. Is Ben Glory? I can't remember. So yeah, Blood Ties is number five. Alright, so for number four, he's got Angel. He says, first episode I ever watched, I love Angel, he rocks. <laughs> so um, I'm... Not that big of a fan of season one, actually. There are about four or five episodes that if somebody says, oh, should I watch season one? I'll say watch these. And Angel is definitely one of them. Uh, it's the first time we find out that Angel is in fact a vampire. And we find out that he's got a soul. And uh, yeah, Buffy and Angel kiss. It's all weirdness. And yeah, it's, it's a fun episode. But uh, it lacks the production value that the later seasons have. And so... Like I said, season one is just not one of my favorites, but it's a, it's almost like after you've watched seasons two through seven, season one is a lot better upon a second viewing because you can kind of just have fun with it and everything's pretty much rock'em, sock'em, in and out in one episode, done. But uh, yeah. So for number three, he's got Anne. Stuff with Buffy being isolated gets me every time, he says. I really love that moment when she watches her friends from across the street at the end of Becoming, and this was an extension of that. Anne featured one of the best action sequence sequences, too. Um, yes, I agree. I love the action sequence when Buffy and Lily and Chantrell uh, <laughs> are getting everybody out of the hell prison slave dimension. Uh, it's really nice. And yeah, um, I actually did a whole video about Anne and her importance to the Buffy mythology and where she fits in the verse. And uh, yeah, this is one of those episodes. It's not the best season premiere, but it definitely puts a lot of things into perspective for the character. Um, Buffy is trying to pull herself so far away from her old life, not realizing that 
she is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, no matter what. She can try and hide from it, and by the end she says, I'm Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and you are. So, yeah, this is a good one, and this is where Buffy gives her identity, her name, to another person. And this is kind of foreshadowing of what she's going to do in the series finale, if you think about it. Uh, she's going to share her power with other people. All right, so number two, get it done. Ooh, I like this one. Can't explain, I just love it. Two standout moments are seeing how the Slayer was created and how cool would look just throwing his weapons at the demon. So yes, this is actually one of the episodes that I considered putting on my top five list. I love this episode and yeah, I can't really explain it either, but the production value for this episode is not very great. Uh, the camera work looks like, you know, the lighting guy forgot to show up, but aside from that, you get so many great moments. I love when Buffy comes in with the shovel and she says, if you are an idiot, you can die with Chloe and I'll bury you in the backyard too. And it's, it's this moment where Buffy says, all right, we have got to get our shit together because we are just fodder. We are lining up to be slaughtered. And oh, there's just so many awesome things that happen in this one. This is the one where um, Andrew wears the oven mitts and he's got the big board. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And yeah, this is where Spike goes and puts on his stupid coat so that he can be Spike again. Whatever. But yeah, there's just a lot of crazy stuff going on here. The, the moment where the guy gives Buffy the vision by touching her on the hand to send her home or whatever. Oh, her eyes are so pretty. The way they just... Oh, they just... Oh my gosh. Great. Ugh. All right. And for number one, he picked conversations with dead people. And uh, you're like my soul brother. I'm another mother. And he says, mainly the stuff with Buffy in the graveyard. There was so much there that I relate to, and it really helped us understand Buffy in that season. I completely agree. Buffy in the graveyard could be an entire episode unto itself with all, without all the Willow and not Tara stuff and without all the Dawn stuff. You could just have the entire episode be about Buffy in the graveyard with Holden, and it would be totally fine. But there are so many profound moments from this episode. Um, uh, the, the thing where Joyce is like on the couch and it's, oh, like crazy. Uh, yeah, so. Hi, Andre. I hope you enjoyed your video. I know it's a bit shorter than my own, but hey, that's life. Uh, everybody else, please let me know what your top five favorite Buffy episodes are. Or Angel. We'll talk about it. We're not discriminating. Uh, yeah, I'm Presnella Young. You can come right back here to the Buffington Post anytime. I've got Buffyverse discussions, discussions on the other Slayers, my continued Season 8 coverage, and Angel and Faith Season 10 number 17 will be out next Wednesday, August 5th. So stay tuned for that. I hope you're having a great 2015 so far, everybody. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you next time. I am the stone that the builder refused. I am the visual, the inspiration that made ladies sing the blues. I'm the spark that makes your idea bright. The same spark that lights the dark so that you can know your left from your right. I am the ballad in your box, the bullet in the gun, the inner glow that let you know to call your brother son. The story that just begun, the promise of what's to come. And I'm going to remain a soldier till the war is won. <laughs>